Hello! Today is July 4th, 2019, and here in the hobby room I'm working on chip evacuation for my 3-axis CNC machine behind me. Uh, previously I've had this dust collection uh, boot that uh, is hooked up to the vacuum, which is, is decent enough um, for really lightweight dust. Uh, it'll pull enough air through that uh, it gets it. But sometimes I don't get all the, the cutting chips, uh, whether that be wood or metal, uh, foam, uh, whatever I'm cutting, out of the, the cutting area. And it's nice to have those out of the way so they're not being recut and potentially melted if it's plastic. Or if it's metal, uh, you can go through a work hardening process where once something is cut or worked on, it actually uh, gets an effective hardness uh, that's harder than the original material that you were cutting. So you don't want to recut those chips because uh, the change in hardness uh, erodes at the cutter faster. So to have a nice, efficient, clean, decent surface finish on your parts, you want to get those cut chips out of the cutting area. So I'm going to add an air blast in using a dental slash medical compressor that I got from the reuse store a while back. Uh, and see if I can't route some air to it. So I've actually already run the line. You can see it kind of going up and over uh, to the spindle here. And then if I pull it forward, you might be able to see a little bit of how I've got it set up. It just comes into a little P-clip here um, with a valve that I can open and close. I actually don't really need the valve because when I turn the switch on here, the pump comes on and that provides air all the way through the hose, but I don't really need to shut it off here. If I had shop air or something like that that was already pressurized and I was plumbing it to the spindle and I wanted to turn it off or on, then this would make sense. But as I look at it now, I really just have the on off switch for the compressor that controls it. So that was a little bit of a lack of foresight on my side, but uh, one of the things that I, I did enjoy about this install here is I took this red plastic tube and instead of just cutting it off and having it kind of a big port there with low velocity. I wanted something that was tapered, narrow, and has more of a directed flow. And if you were to just like cut this off, put a plug in and drill a tiny hole in it, um, or uh, like a disc with a tiny hole in it, you kind of get this high cavitation flow as it goes from a large uh, channel, uh, the main tube, through this tiny little orifice and then out. Uh, it becomes kind of a scattered shotgun blast uh, of flow. And what I want is more of a laminar flow where it's very smooth and controlled. And to do that, you can basically neck down your um, main larger channel into a smaller one progressively over time so that as those things compress, they kind of do their own attenuation and get their, their flow very smooth as it comes out. So then when it exits the tip, it's also very straightforward. It pierces through the material that it's going through, the, in this case, compressed air through ambient pressure air. And as that air decelerates or slows down, it's slowing down as it's in a very focused direction. Um, so that way I can get a longer reach, if you will, um, without actually having to touch the work. So what I did, all that in a nutshell, is basically heated up this extrusion uh, at one end while the far end of it was clamped in the vise uh, on the workbench here. And then as it heated up, I just pulled tension and stretched the whole thing out a ways until it got really long and tongue, uh, long like a piece of Laffy Taffy or gum. And then I held it there as it cooled. And since I stretched it out from its original position, it, it kept the, the tubular shape. Then once it was hard, I could just snip it um, in the middle of the section that it elongated, and I had a nice long lead of tapered, like laminar flow tuned tubing to use on the tip here. So I'm gonna take the camera off uh, and get you a little closer so you can see kind of what I'm talking about here. So, hopefully this isn't too shaky, shaky jerky, but that little bit of laminar flowination, and I'm gonna try to get the focus as tight here as I can, but you can see how that tube tapers right down towards the end there. I don't know if I can zoom in, if that helps at all. But uh, yeah, anyway, rotate that around, point it right at the end mill, and when you turn it on, you get nice chip evacuation. So, getting my focus back to a couple feet, wide get you back on there and I'm back in business so that is all for 4th of July I'm gonna get back to some other projects and uh, enjoying this nice day off peace y'all